Hello, everyone. Welcome to our Jolt Call presentation. This slot is the last one for this groundbreaking online Jolt Call conference. I hope you have been enjoying the conference. You may realize that this is a video produced myself, Keiko Sakui, and by my partner, Neil Kawi. We will talk about making videos engaging. So we hope that uh, this vi uh, video will prove our point. The video is about 15 minutes long, and we will pause at halfway for a brief discussion, and then we will be available for the Q&A session on Zoom afterwards. Also, if you want to write questions in the chat during our video, please do so. We can answer them at the Q&A session. Okay, over to Neil. We are both uh, university language teachers, but we also make totally online courses, which you can see on the Udemy platform. We don't generally know who our students are, and they come from many different countries. Most of the content of these courses is transmitted through video. So in today's presentation, we focus on videos, and in particular, we want to talk about how to make videos that will engage students and make them want to keep watching. Our talk today is divided into two halves. First, we'll discuss some principles of how to create engaging videos. And secondly, we'll share the results of a study that we carried out to find out what university students in Japan think is an engaging teacher presence in a video. Uh, together, this should give you lots of hints uh, if you make your own videos and how to make them as engaging as possible. There is a lot of research about how to present videos in the best way to engage learners and keep their attention. This is a big area, but I'll just go over a few points uh, that I think are the most important to consider. The first important concept is cognitive overload. That is, you don't want to overwhelm your viewer with a lot of information that they can't take in. And there are several points to consider. One is the overall length of the video, which needs to be divided into manageable chunks. Of course, this will depend on your student's motivation and how interesting your material is. But a rule of thumb is that around about six minutes or less is a good length not to overload viewers' cognitive capacity and to retain their attention. Secondly, it's good to get your image as high a quality as possible, but even more important, is to make sure your students can hear you well. A research shows viewers are tolerant of a poor image, but not of poor audio. You should also be careful about the speed of your voice and you wanna be as clear as possible and not, of course, not too fast. An interesting topic is what the size of the talking head uh, should be. You have to remember that many students will be watching on their phone, so a fairly large head which takes up much of the screen, is a good thing rather than a rather distant whole person image. Finally, it's also good to not mix text and talk too much on your video, a few key words at the right time. And you can see on this video that we display a few words on the screen, but not too many. So these principles are fairly technical features that have been examined a lot through research. And they're great rules to follow in order to engage with students. For the rest of our talk, we'd like to report on a study to try and find out what aspects of videos language learning students like or they don't like. And in particular, we're interested in the presence of a teacher. So for our study, we chose six language learning videos from YouTube. Uh, these were all about uh, pronunciation. And we selected these six clips by having some hypothesis as to which ones might be popular and which ones are not, although all of them actually have a very high number of views. We tried to include different factors such as gender and style. All of the teachers are so-called native speakers, uh, three men and three women. We asked the students at our two universities to watch for two minutes and then answer a short online survey. We are ideally trying to get a kind of gut reaction to the videos as to which was the most engaging and which was the most likely for them to keep watching. We got 18 replies from the survey and then we had seven face-to-face -face interviews as well. 
Eighteen people participated in our study. Sixteen people are between nineteen to twenty-one years old, and one is twenty-six, and then another one is sixty years old. Most of them are Japanese, and then two are from the UK. Five others are from Sri Lanka, Korea, China, and Hungary. Ten female students and eight male students. Their language levels are from intermediate to advanced and native speaker level. Within the online survey that we showed our participants, we asked them to comment on six videos and. There were various aspects of these videos that we wanted them to think about.、Uh, we asked a question, and the answer was on a Likert scale from from one to five. And these are so, these are the、um, aspects we looked at: the head size. So, for example, was it too small or too big or just right, and so on.、Uh, the emotional tone, serious or playful.、Uh, the background behind the speaker, appropriate, inappropriate. Are their voice speed and how clear they were, whether they were easy to understand, and if they used any on-screen text,、uh, not subtitles,、uh, but other、um, forms of text that appeared, were they helpful or not? And then perhaps the most important question for us was whether the、uh, teachers, the video teachers, were interesting, and did the、um, viewers really want to continue to listen to them? Uh, we don't have time、uh, to show you all six clips of two minutes from the YouTube teachers, but we would like to show you three clips、um, of about thirty seconds each. And after、uh, we finish showing them, we'd like to pause the video and just get uh, uh, your opinions about these three teachers. Please watch Emma. I know you're super keen to improve your English pronunciation, and to do that, you need two things: a native English speaker and a super amazing tool called the IPA, the International Phonetic Alphabet. Huh? Don't worry. I'm going to tell you all about it in just a minute. Please watch Elliot. And、uh, I have some really great words, which are slightly complicated, and I'm going to make them easy for you. The first word that I really, really need to address for you is the word which really annoys me when natives get it wrong, and especially when they spell it wrong as well. It's not pronunciation, okay? We pronounce something, but when we're talking about it in this way, it's pronunciation. Pronunciation, none. Pronunciation, not pronunciation. As a pronunciation teacher, you can imagine that really annoys me when people get it wrong. And finally, please watch Ronnie. Hi, my name is Ronnie, and I have a bottle of water. What? So sometimes when I go to a restaurant and I order water. People don't understand me. I'm in Canada. I'm speaking English, and I said, "Water," and they look at me strange. And I go,、uh, "You know, water. A、oh, water. Yes, water. No, no, it's water. It's a T, right? W A T E R. This in Canada, we call <clears throat> a bottle of water." Okay, we'll pause the video here. Just to see how people feel about these three YouTube teachers. As we thought, our video number one, which was Emma, and video number six, which we haven't shown you,、uh, were the two most popular videos.、Uh, you can see there in the blue there, and Ronnie、uh, was the least popular.、Uh, she only had one person who liked. Her the most, so that wasn't that surprising. But what was surprising was the range of preferences, and there were a number of different reasons、uh, why students gave 
for their particular video. So the two most important reasons why students liked the teacher uh, was that they were very clear and they spoke at an appropriate speed. Um, other reasons why they liked the videos were that they weren't boring, um, they were straight to the point, um, they were humorous and the teacher was actually a very attractive person. Not so surprisingly, when we asked the students uh, which of the six videos they liked the least, it was a kind of mirror image of which ones they liked the best, with uh, Ronnie, who only had one vote for the best video, coming out as the least popular. Again, as somewhat expectedly, the reasons why these videos or these teachers were not so popular is basically the opposite of why the videos were liked. The two most common reasons were that the videos were too slow and were boring. Uh, there was also uh, the, re the video was not focused enough. And then two interesting ones at the bottom there are that the presenter was somewhat scary and rude. So it would seem that we could recommend a, a number of principles for the creators of language learning videos. Try to find a good speed, be clear about what you want to say and be friendly. But this is not the whole story and there is an interesting twist to this research. Here we can see that three teachers on the left side. And then we have the number of students' responses on how likely they're going to continue watching. On the left side is most likely no and on the right side is most likely yes. When we look at this breakdown, things are not that straightforward. What we're most interested in is which teachers are the students most likely to continue watching. Yes, certainly more people said that they were likely to continue to watch Emma, but other people thought they would continue watching Elliot or even Ronnie, who was the least popular overall. There are quite a range of individual differences and there is no clear template that that we are looking for. Let us now turn to the interview results. We carry out interview sessions with seven students and we asked in more detail about the videos that they had watched. What we found is that there are some factors that we cannot control. One is students' taste. For example, some students loved Elliot and in fact, one student said that he learned how to speak like Elliot when he was at high school. But at the same time, some students found Elliot quite irritating. Another factor we cannot control is what devices students use. Some people use a laptop and then others use their phones which device they use may have an impact on how they perceive a video. So these are the two areas that we found we cannot control much. However, there are some factors that material writers and the designers can control. Students responded well to the genuine authenticity or passion that the video teachers tried to deliver and the students responded very positively to the videos, which try hard to motivate learners. Another factor that students liked is a sense that the curriculum is structured and it is written progressively so that they feel they are moving on in their learning journey and they are improving. Another factor is that they know they need to study but they are also aware that it is easy to slip away and not continue. So they appreciate it when videos have an element which pushes students to study further. One final point we found from the interview is that the learners appreciate scripts or textual information displayed in a timely fashion which aids their comprehension. I'd just like to finish by summarising three main points. First of all, there are technical factors which affect the quality of a video and, and as a result, 
whether students find that video engaging or not. Uh, this includes the, the sound, which is the most important quality. And also I mentioned that uh, we shouldn't have too many uh, textual messages compared to the number of visual messages in the video. A second factor is uh, pedagogical factors and students, especially in the interviews we carried out, appreciated a clear and progressive curriculum in which they can see their progress. Connected to this is the fact that a video should be broken down into manageable chunks and should be an appropriate length. Finally, there are emotional factors, tastes which we cannot control, but a genuineness and a passion uh, does seem to communicate to students, and also some mechanism to push students to study, even if they don't really want to. If we can get the right combination of these three factors, then is a, there is a good chance students will really engage with and learn from our videos. Thank you very much for listening.